This whole fight scene from Wolverine and Deadpool is all CG. You wouldn't think that just watching it, but movies now, especially ones from Marvel, have tons of CG in almost every single shot. So how long do these CG scenes take to make? And how are they made? To answer these questions, I'll take a relatively simple two second shot from Wolverine and Deadpool that has no effects at all and add in a background in Wolverine's claws and helmet. To do this, I'm enlisting the help of someone who's an actual VFX artist and has worked on many movies, Ali Void. Hey, this is Ali Void. Let's start with the simplest part of the scene, removing the background. Since the actors are in front of a blue screen, we can use After Effects, remove the blue and add in the background behind the characters. But often these blue and green screens are not lit so well. And because of that, Removing them in post is difficult and usually doesn't look good. And that's exactly what we have here. So we'll have to use something else. You can't just key out a blue or green screen shot all by itself because working with one layer just isn't enough. Or else you'll have all these artifacts that pop up and ruin the shot completely. Instead, you only want to cut out certain parts of the body and then extract those portions from the background. However, if the shot is just not recoverable, you could always cut out the whole character as a whole, which is super tedious and is such a time consuming process. Thankfully, rotoscoping has gotten a lot better, so you don't have to go in and fix every single frame. Though there are some frames that you have to go in and fix manually. This step took about an hour to finish for me. Once we cut out Wolverine from the scene, we essentially have a PNG of him that we can place on top of our background. But our background doesn't move with the camera at all, and that's where tracking comes in. If we can track our background and make it move with the camera, we'll have a way to put any object into the scene and make it look like it was always there. I did a simple camera track in After Effects and that step wasn't too difficult, especially since I have very staple footage. And even if I didn't, many movies out there have tracking dots on the floors and walls to help the software track these scenes better. Although sometimes they're not great, but we'll talk about that more in a second. Actors can also have tracking dots on their faces for better face tracking, but we don't have that with Wolverine's face. And we need to track his face to add in the mask. There are two ways to track the face. There is manual tracking where you go frame by frame and manually track the same parts of the face. And this is something that VFX artists often have to do with all types of shots. But manual tracking still has major issues, especially if you're working with shaky or blurry footage. 3D tracking can still sometimes come out looking bad even through manual tracking. I use manual tracking for the hand so I can add in the claws. In the end, it still didn't look good, but that alone took four hours for only two seconds. But back to the face. Before we use manual tracking, let's try the other method, tracking in Blender. I place tracking points on Wolverine's face and it tracked the face. With this track, I have a 3D visualization of how Wolverine's face moves in the scene, and I could use that to add the mask in. But we're still not done. First, look at Wolverine's head. His hair is showing, and it shouldn't, since presumably he's wearing a mask. What I did is I removed the hair using the same technique we used for the background. I painted out the part of the footage where Wolverine's hair would show and tracked that to the background. And then I placed that new track bit on top of Wolverine. But now, when we play back the video, it seems like his hair disappears. The second thing that we're missing is the lighting. Usually when you're on set, you'd have someone that takes an HDRI or, or a 360 degree panoramic picture, and that would help us match the lighting. But we don't have that here, so we're just going to have to guess where the light is coming from. Thankfully, Void helped me out with that. Notice the highlight on Wolverine's arms and it just pops. Let's go yeah. ahead and match the same look on the mask. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that pops a little bit more. Yeah, now we're kind of getting something that kind of like matches a little bit of the mask. Yeah. With his air out of the way, we're essentially done with a shot. After 12 hours, we have a two second clip. I do want to point out a couple of things. This simple shot was two seconds long, was in slow motion, I didn't have to do any animation, and I had great lighting. All of these things made my life a lot easier. Many artists have to remake whole scenes in CG, and that alone can take months for a two second shot. You also have to remember that it takes time to create these realistic models and actually animate them. Many of these skilled artists are under time pressure trying to get something to look very realistic, and sometimes that falls through. With that being said, I want to say thank you to Ali Void. Go watch his amazing videos. And if you enjoyed this video, think about liking and subscribing. Thank you for watching, and bye.